My name is Alice McDermott. I'm a novelist. Um, I'm here in Aspen for, uh, to launch the 2018 Aspen Words series. I think I, I always knew that writing was my way of uh, organizing the world. I was one of these kids who you know, kept dream journals and wrote stories. Um, but it really wasn't until I was in college uh, and I took a course that was called The Nature of Nonfiction. And the first essay that I wrote, I completely made up. None of it had actually happened. Um, but I had a wonderful teacher who read it and said to me, I got bad news for you, kid. You're a writer and you'll never shake it. <laughs> well, I've been teaching at Johns Hopkins um, over 20 years now and uh, teaching before that ever since I was a graduate student at the University of New Hampshire. Um, so I've always felt as if the writing, my writing life and my teaching life has always run uh, hand in hand in parallel. Um, the wonderful thing about it is that uh, you always have a, a support group. <laughs> you, know? you have your students who are struggling with the same things that you're struggling with, even when you're writing your eighth novel and they're writing their first, or you're writing your 20th short story and they're trying to get their first working on the page. Um, but discovering a voice, finding what the true subject is, manipulating language, working with language, um, trying to be honest, trying to be authentic, writing and rewriting, um, and often feeling, why am I doing this? Does it really matter? Um, so when I walk into a classroom, I see um, myself joining with a group of peers and understanding that Here's a group of people who finds this art, the literary art, as essential, just as I do. Um, so teaching is, is edifying for me in many ways. The Ninth Hour is my eighth novel. Um, it's about, essentially, a, a community of working women in New York in the early part of the 20th century, which means it's a story about nuns, <laughs> the original working women. Um, it uh, involves a fictional order of nuns, um, but one based very much on uh, the nuns who, who did live and work uh, in many American cities and cities across the world, uh, taking care of the poor, providing a social safety net when there was none. You would think um, writing an eighth novel um, would be a breeze after getting through your first novel, <laughs> but it never gets any easier. That's the, that's the bad news that I have to give my, my students. Um, not only do you raise the bar higher, there's more you want to do, um, but each story that you write, each novel, um, is, is a journey into the unknown. Um, what you did before is irrelevant. Uh, you figured out or you came as, as close as you could to figuring out how to tell that story in the past. Now there's, this is a new story. Now these are new characters. Now you have other ideas and themes that, that are percolating up. Each story has to find its own structure. Um, with each story you have to find the authentic voice, um, the, the true voice with which to tell it. Um, so every time you feel like a novice. Um, it's in some ways it keeps you eternally young, <laughs> you know. Um, in other ways it's, um, it's I'm never going to get any better at this and it's never going to get any easier. Now, when I think about um, what book has made me see the world differently, I can never think just one book. Um, I think every good book makes you see the world differently because it invites you to see the world through someone else's eyes, to hear that inner voice with which we all speak to ourselves, but to hear someone else's. Um, of course, the question um, of books that, that change the way you look at the world um, makes me think of the great sort of social justice novels. Um, from Dickens uh, to Grapes of Wrath, um, Tilly Olson's Yan on Dio, um, you know, from uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin to Beloved, <laughs> you know, all those books that, um, that tell you something about the world and maybe expand the way that you see it. But when I think about that, I also realize that so many of those novels were novels I read as a student, novels that were assigned to me. 
Um, you know, when I was looking at the wonderful list of nominees for the Aspen Prize, um, I, you know, it was thrilling to think um, we really are in a great era of, of literature. Um, there are wonderful new voices um, publishing first and second novels. There are old voices being rediscovered. Um, but along with that, I worry that who's reading these books? You know, English education, English literature education, I mean education in English, not just um, Dickens, um, is, is moving away from requiring students to read entire books. It's moving away from fiction. You know, as the, um, the business model is being applied to education, when we're looking for results, results, results that we can quantify, um, fiction is being pushed out. English teachers are being encouraged and sometimes required to teach more nonfiction and to teach excerpts, which, which horrifies me as, as both a reader and a writer. Um, so my worry is not that we don't have enough literature um, and new literature is coming all the time that, that can open our eyes and expand our experience of the world, of what it is to be human. My worry at this stage uh, of my life um, is that who will have these books in their hands? Who will be required to read these books so they can have that experience?